this prison is not what we are used to think and to know in the West, the place of the brainwashing. If you think that Puy had his butler in prison for the first five years of his prison, because the, the, because his, um, because the Chinese thought that he couldn't, and it would have been too tough for him. So he, he would have refused this change. So there is a big conflict. There is a kind of dialectic. Uh, the governor says, you have to change. Pui thinks a man cannot change. He thinks he will spend all his life in prison. You forgot my tooth powder. Oh, yes, sir. In the film, the prison governor is played by China's deputy minister of culture and one of the country's leading actors, Ying Rou Shen. Stop. Your laces are undone. Do them up. The governor, of course, is a committed communist uh, who was doing things, first of all, because uh, it was part of the cause and uh, also because he was ordered to do so. But uh, I think there's more to it than that. The, let's say that there are two kinds of communism, especially where prisons are concerned. Uh, there is the punitive kind. The, the, the punitive-minded uh, communist who thinks, well, because these are war criminals, because they have uh, done this and that bad thing to the people, so they are to be punished, and I'm here to, to punish them. And um, you, you, you can get real sadists out of people like that. And then there's the other kind who are truly, finally, convinced themselves that the end of the revolution was not to destroy, but to rebuild. That it is possible to, uh, to rejuvenate, to uh, restore a person's true dignity, to make him feel that uh, there's a future for him as an equal, and to feel true gratification when that is achieved. Puyi was inordinately proud of himself when he actually could dig a hole and grow a flower. Uh, I think that, that must have affected him much more than we can imagine. For someone who's never done a bit of work all his life, I think it is to restore the balance of one's mind, to put everything in its true perspective. Whereas before this, I think everything in Puyi's mentality was distorted. Uh, uh,最后就像问你们的,你们在那个服务学院管理所的时候,你们读的书有没有读毛神?什么?毛泽东的那个毛神。哎,当然呢,毛泉,关于那个,关于那个马克思主义的学说,我的学习在这。看这样的东西
You knew about a lot of things in Mancuco, even the secret agreements. But you couldn't possibly have known about the Japanese biological warfare experiments in Harbin, could you? So why did you sign these papers? I was responsible for everything. You are responsible for what you do. All your life, you thought you were better than everyone else. Now you think you are the worst of all. Why can you not leave me alone? You saved my life to make me a puppet in your own play. You saved me because I am useful to you. Is that so terrible? To be useful? What is interesting is when in 1959, uh, after nine years of prison, Puyi has the pardon, we don't know if he has changed or not. Even the governor of the prison doesn't know it. Then we follow a bit Puyi outside. He becomes a gardener, he's in the botanic garden. Is he changed? Yes, he's changed. You know why he's changed? Because for the first time in his life, this man is free. He's free to go in the street, he's free to ride a bicycle, he's free to get a, bu to a bus, to take a bus, to go in the middle with other people. After he left prison, Puyi worked in the Peking Botanical Gardens, and then as a literary and historical worker for the Historical Materials Commission of the National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference. He was presented as a symbol of the transformations wrought by the new China, but some Western observers claimed that he was now merely a mouthpiece for propaganda. He lived long enough to witness the upheaval of the Cultural Revolution, during which his former prison governor was himself in prison. Tadiga A slight risk that this interpretation of Puyi's life might be just a little bit of a fairy tale, that things come out so well for him and everybody's uh, redeemed through re education. Isn't the risk of it being a fairy tale ending? Um, I think uh, Puyi is a bit uh, Peter Pan. I mean, he's somebody who doesn't want to grow up, somebody who has a big problem to become an adult. And he will be an, an adult, a grow up, only when he will be an old man. Um, no, be, I don't, I hope this risk is not there, just because the story of Puyi is a very exceptional story. The prison where Puyi was is a very special, was a very special prison. And, um, and also what I think is important is the idea that uh, uh, Chinese uh, uh, justice has about, uh, for example, the war criminal. What was important was uh, not so much the punishment, but was important the re-education. This is in general in, um, in Chinese uh, prison, even today, even if they are in prison sometimes for uh, wrong reasons or reasons that to us would look wrong, the idea of the Chinese justice is not uh, purely punish these people, these eventual criminals, but to try to make them understand. And this is, I think, true. It's not, it's not propaganda. Pu 
Yi was emperor for only three years. Before he took the throne, China had been ruled by the corrupt and ruthless Empress Dowager. During the 50 years of her reign, China was carved up and exploited by foreign powers. The fanatical Boxer Rebellion had been crushed by Western troops in 1900, but it was followed by numerous Republican uprisings, inspired by Dr. Sun Yat-sen. In 1911, there was a mutiny in the army, and China became a republic. The Qing Dynasty and 3,000 years of imperial rule came to an end. Puyi retained his court and his title of emperor, but he now had no power outside the Forbidden City and was not allowed outside its walls. In 1931, the Japanese seized control of Manchuria in northern China. The chief executive of the new state of Manchukuo would be Pu Yi. Two years later, he was enthroned as the puppet emperor there. In his bulletproof car, there he goes, from his temporary palace to the enthronement ceremony on one of the coldest days of the year in bleak Tsingking or Tsengkung. Arrived at the so-called Temple of Heaven, officers, with eyes in the back of their heads, salute. The Chinese cameraman gets just this glimpse of the new Lord of Manchukuo as he proceeds as a leisurely gate to the mysterious enclosure. It's all over now, and the new monarch retraces his steps to his car. Long live the emperor. The newly enthroned emperor of Manchukuo, His Majesty Pu Yai, wearing horn-rimmed glasses, faces the camera in democratic fashion at Sing King. His Majesty forgot to sign the appointment of the new Prime Minister. I have tremendous sympathy for him. I think he's a very simple man, got caught in extraordinary circumstances, end of an era and beginning of a new era in China. And I don't think he's a dark force, he's a light force. He's pure, he's innocent. And, and he's tremendously isolated, emotionally and physically, from reality. And I have tremendous feeling for him that until he died, he never did quite get connected. Except like with the tutor in the Forbidden City and then Johnston and of course the wet nurse and her nipple to suck on. Something it's a comfort physically to him. And she also treat him like a human being. And then the wife, very briefly, and then Johnston and then the governor in the prison. But for a lifetime, there's so few. Puyi was emperor of Manchukuo for 11 years, but his existence was, in his own words, a kind of living death. He was a powerless instrument of the Japanese, an object of hatred and derision. He gave bogus respectability to a brutal regime which exploited the local Manchu people and used terror tactics to enforce its rule. In 1937, the Japanese launched a full-scale war against China. It was an assault of merciless ferocity, and at Nanking, a quarter of a million unarmed civilians were cold-bloodedly slaughtered. Puyi issued endless communiques praising the Japanese war effort, first against China, then against Britain and America as the Second World War began. Two days after Hiroshima, the Russians moved into Manchuria and captured Puyi as he tried to make his escape. He was taken to a Soviet detention center and then to the Tokyo war crimes trial, where he spent 10 days in the witness box. <laughs> Uh, after I got into Manchuria, I lost my personal freedom, my physical freedom. Had I re resisted against this oppression, 
I would never be here to testify today. Did you not repeatedly state to them that you hoped for a Japanese victory in the Pacific War? As I have repeatedly told you, that after I arrived at Manchu, uh, Manchuria, I had lost my uh, hands and arms, and also my mouth was stuck. How old is Pui? Pui is 4,000 years, uh, like every Chinese. This is very, very, this is part of my fascination the age of Ch Chinese and the age of China. When I went the first time to the Forbidden City, which was the main set of the movie, I was having a kind of overdose of faces, these faces of farmers, peasants coming from the countryside, invading the imperial palace, looking for the ghost of the emperor. Two thousand members of the People's Liberation Army have been drafted in as extras for the scene of the coronation of the boy emperor. Yeah. 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 Uh